So a 50 year old Atari 2600 with 128 bytes of RAM, not gigabytes, but bytes of RAM just humiliated ChatGPT's latest model at chess. And this isn't even funny. It's kind of terrifying for the entire AI industry. We're talking about a machine with 1.19 megahertz processor, not gigahertz and not core, like 1.9 megahertz processor from 1977 that thinks only one or two moves ahead completely totally destroyed OpenAI's flagship model that was trained on trillions of tokens. But here's the real question. Is this an embarrassing loss actually revealing something much darker about the AI, uh, AI world? What happens when the most advanced AI in the world can't beat technology that's older than most of our most of us, right? And why are we warning and and why are the warning signs about model collapse and overfitting pointing to the same ugly truth that we might have already hit the wall? Let's dive into some of these questions today. Welcome to Startup Hack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. So this Atari story isn't just a tech curiosity, it's a perfect illustration of why the AI bubble is starting to burst. When a machine with less computing power than your microwave can outplay the future of intelligence, we need to ask some serious questions. Let me break down what the chess match reveals about the overfitting, model collapse, and why we're hitting diminishing returns faster than any anyone wants to admit. So uh, infrastructure architect Robert Caruso decided to pit ChatGPT against the Atari 2600 video chess game, expecting an easy victory for the modern AI. The Atari 2600 runs on a MOS technology 60, uh, 6507 processor at 1.19 megahertz with just 128 bytes of RAM. So your smartphone literally is about 10,000 times more powerful. ChatGPT confused rooks for bishops, forgot where its own pieces were, and made moves that would get uh, would have gotten laughed out of a third grade class chess club. So for 90 minutes, Crusoe had to stop ChatGPT from making illegal moves and correct its board awareness multiple times per, per the game. ChatGPT couldn't even figure out the game of chess correctly. The ancient chess, ancient chess engine only thinks one or two moves ahead, yet it consistently outplayed an AI trained on more computing power than, the, than existed in 1997. So let's dive into some of this report here because I don't want you to think I'm making this up because this is like a little too good to be true, right? So this is where you get the headlines, right? You got absolutely absolutely wrecked was the quote. Now, in a quite unexpected turn of events, it claims that OpenAI's ChatGPT got absolutely wrecked at a be on a beginner's level while playing this, right? And so this is actually a LinkedIn uh, post about it. So he said, it started as a simple experiment to pit ChatGPT against the Atari's 2600 chess engine. Uh, via the Stella emulator and see what happens. I figured it'd be a lighthearted stroll down retro memory lane. What actually happened? ChatGPT got absolutely wrecked on the beginner level. This was a con this was after a conversation we had regarding the history of AI and chess, which led to to it volunteering to play Atari chess. It wanted to find out how quickly it could beat the game that only thinks one to two moves ahead on a 1.9 uh, megahertz CPU. Despite being given a baseline board layout to identify pieces, ChatGPT confused rooks for bishops, missed pawn forks, and repeatedly lost track of where pieces were, first blaming the Atari icons as too abstract to recognize, then faring no better even after switching to standard chess notation. It made enough blunders to get laughed out of a third grade chess club. Meanwhile, Atari's humble 8-bit engine just did its thing. No language model, no flash, just brute force board evaluation, and 1977 stubbornness. For 90 minutes, I had to stop it from making awful moves and correct its board awareness multiple times per turn. It kept promising it would improve if it just started over. Eventually, even ChatGPT knew it was beat and conceded that it was with its head hung low. Now, I thought this was really fascinating and really interesting because as we look at this, you know, this is part of the core of the problem here, right? Just because like it can't even actually assimilate a chess game. How's it supposed to run a business for you? Like all these things about it replacing developers or uh, the talk about it. Um, I don't even know cooking your breakfast. I don't even know what all the promises are. The hype got, has gotten so ridiculous that I can't even understand. So the embarrassing loss reveals that the fundamental difference between actual logic and statistical pattern matching that powers modern L LLMs. ChatGPT excels at generating human-like text because it learned patterns from billions of sentences, but chess requires spatial reasoning and rule following. The Atari chess program was built from the ground up to play chess with clear logic and rules, while ChatGPT just predicts the most probable next token. 
Modern AI systems are essentially very sophisticated autocomplete engines. They don't actually understand the games they're trying to play. When you remove ChatGPT from its comfort zone of text generation, it becomes obvious that it lacks the fundamental reasoning that we thought it could possess. And that is why AI can write poetry about chess strategy, but can't actually execute that strategy on a real board. Now, model overfitting occurs when an AI system becomes too specialized to its training data and loses the ability to generalize to new situations. This means that in order for uh, OpenAI or ChatGPT to be accurate in this chess game, it would have had to study every single computational move possible in a chess game. I don't know what that number is, but it's a really large computational matrix. It's like studying for a test by memorizing specific answers instead of understanding the underlying concepts. And so you'll fail when you face new questions. And this is what happened as ChatGPT tried to play chess against a game that actually followed computational logic. So see, the ChatGPT doesn't have logic built in. It will have bordering rules and agent... Um, and system prompts and, and guides to be able to keep it within bounds, but the LLMs are just statistical pattern matching. ChatGPT was trained on text descriptions of chess games and chess discussions, but that doesn't translate to actually playing the game. So I've seen this pattern repeatedly as I've used this LLM, systems that work perfectly in controlled environments but failed spectacularly in real world. Overfitted models often appear to perform brilliantly during training, but then collapse when confronted with scenarios that weren't in their training data set. The chess match perfectly demonstrates how current AI models can have impressive capabilities in one domain while completely useless in a related area. This is why I think what we're seeing in, this, in the AI uh, bubble burst right now, let me be very clear about this. I'm not saying that this is like an AI collapse. This is a bubble burst. There was a lot of over, oversold hype. What we're going to see is the deflate of that hype and people are going to understand what LLMs are really truly good for. How RAG plus LLMs, how a lot of these new uh, behaviors, how plugging some MCP into very controlled agent uh, LLM environments, very specific use cases, we're going to see this niche down and come to very specialized use cases. That's what's going to happen when as the bubble is bursting. Now, another one is model collapse happens when AI systems are trained on data generated by other AI systems. This is literally AI eating its own vomit, right? This creates a degenerative feedback loop. A recent nature study showed that when models trained on synthetic data, they started forgetting edge cases and rare events and eventually producing total gibberish. As more AI generated content floods the internet, future models will inevitably train on this synthetic data instead of on genuine human content. Researchers from Oxford and other top universities warn that this creates an irreversible defects where models lose touch with the actual data distribution. The problem is accelerating because companies can't reliably, reliably distinguish between human-generated and AI-generated content when scraping training data. The other reason this can become a problem is because we're seeing more and more lawsuits mount where the amount of training data is actually going to be lowering because they're being forced to not steal copyrighted content. So we're essentially watching AI systems eat their own tail, eat their own barf, and each generate be, generation becomes progressively more disconnected from reality. The great example that I hear from this is it's like one, if you put a, co a piece of paper into a copy machine and then you take the copy out of that and put it into the copy machine and keep doing that over and over again, by the 10th or 11th copy, it looks nothing like the original. And that's what's happening here. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected and need to help, you need help getting them connected, hit us up here at Startup Pack. Um, check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we can help your company work to maximum efficiency. Now, according to industry estimates, AI companies will have consumed virtually all available human-generated context uh, text data by 2028. This isn't just about running out of books and websites. It's about running out of diverse, high-quality human thought that makes AI training data effectively. Companies are now desperately trying to create synthetic data by having AI generate its own training material, which accelerates the collapse process. Process. The irony is that the more successful AI becomes at generating content, the faster it poisons its own well of future training data. So the data starvation problem means that current AI capabilities might represent the peak, not the beginning of these systems. I hear people say all the time, oh, we saw this double from four to eight. You're not going to see it go past eight, right? Like this is what we're seeing. We're starting to see the, the point of diminishing returns. Now, recent reports confirm that OpenAI's upcoming Orion models show significantly slower, slower improvements compared to the previous generation leaps. The massive performance games we saw from GPT-3 to 4 are not continuing at the same rate despite exponentially increase on computer resources. Let me spell that out. We're spending more on the servers, more on the training data, and get worse, getting worse results. 
That's what we're seeing. Or smaller improvements of results is probably the better way to say it. So it might have moved from a score of a 76 to a 79, regardless of the fact that it tripled or 10x or 100x the amount of data and computation it required to get there. AI researcher Gary Marcus has been warning for years that we'd hit this wall, and industry leaders like Elon Musk are admitting that he's right. The scaling laws that drove AI investment assumed that more data plus more com computation, i.e. more money spent, would always equal better performance, but that assumption is really starting to break down. We're reaching the point where throwing more money at, comp at computing power at the, as the problem yields marginal improvements at best. Now, LMs work by learning statistical distribution of words, but statistics can't capture the logical rules and spatial reasoning required for a game like chess, as we saw here. And this is just a great example. This limitation isn't a bug that can be fixed. It's a fundamental constraint of how current AI systems are designed. Now, sky-high valuations of companies like OpenAI and Microsoft are based on the assumption that LLMs will eventually become artificial general intelligence, or AGI. When the market realizes that we've hit diminishing returns, these valuations will face a brutal correction similar to the dot-com crash. This is a bubble burst. The billions invested in AI infrastructures and training were justified by exponential improvement projections that are no longer materializing. Even NVIDIA's massive valuation could take a hit when investors realize the scaling assumptions were fundamentally flawed. Now, companies are positioning themselves as AI first without building real underlying value as particularly vulnerable to this correction. So the Atari chess story is a perfect metaphor for the entire bubble. Impressive marketing, uh, marketing and hype, but losing to a simple, well-engineered solution. So proponents argue that AI can use external tools to overcome some of these limitations, but the chess, chess match shows this isn't a silver bullet. ChatGPT had access to standard chess notation and clear board representations, yet it still failed to perform basic chess reasoning. Tool use requires understanding when and how to use appropriate tools, which itself requires a logical reasoning that current AI systems don't have. The problem isn't that ChatGPT couldn't see the chess board clearly. It's that it fundamentally didn't understand what chess is and how the rules worked. This is why we see AI systems confidently using tools incorrectly, creating more problems than they solve. So for instance, in this case, we saw it start to make up uh, rules, right? It started to not follow the rules because it couldn't figure out how to play by the rules. The Atari chess program might not be as sophisticated as a modern chess engine, but it's 100% reliable within the design parameters. ChatGPT can discuss chess strategy, strategies eloquently, but when it comes to actually playing, it's less reliable than a 50-year-old toy. This mirrors what I've seen in, all, in my consulting work. Companies often choose simpler, more predictable solutions over flashy AI implementations. The other day I was on a phone call and somebody called me because they wanted to uh, put together an AI solution for something. And what they ended up describing, I said, you can do that in like five queries using just SQL, right? And he was really upset because he's like, but I want to use AI for it. And I'm like, why would you use the more complex, expensive solution than a simpler solution that's actually gonna produce you better results. So until AI systems can match the reliability of deterministic algorithms, or things like a SQL query in this case, they'll remain tools for approximation rather than precision work. So the chess match should force every business to reconsider their AI strategies and investment opportunities and priorities, right? AI should not be a solution looking for a problem find the problem and then really match to it when you need AI. So in one case, I had two disparate data systems. There was no connecting key between them, but there was human words that a human could match and has been matching for years. We implemented an AI agent for this purpose where it could match the words very consistently. It, the prompt itself took up almost 100 lines of, of prompt, right? It was a very, very long in-depth in -depth prompt but we eventually got it to work really well and really consistently, and we're getting like 98% matching on it. This was something that used to take humans hours to do that we boiled down to do in a couple of seconds on an AI server that we built and ran with open source models in-house. Boom, not a large bill for them, very simple, very robust, saving thousands of dollars a week. Businesses that, that will thrive are those that use AI as a tool to enhance capabilities rather than replace human judgment. The Atari story perfectly encapsulates why we need more realistic expectations about what AI can do and what it cannot do. Companies that are betting their entire digital transformation on AI capabilities that don't actually exist are setting themselves up for a very expensive failure. The smart move is to implement AI incrementally, incrementally test thoroughly, and maintain fallback systems for when the AI inevitably does fail. Now, 
What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm taking this out of context? Love to have a great discussion. Leave a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe because here at Startup Hack, we love to train software, software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So reach out if we can help your company to connect systems to work to maximum efficiency. And here's some great information about some of our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.